point lead to Sydney at half time here against the Blues. They're on the ropes, the Blues. They're on the ropes and they want to turn things around from that second quarter. They conceded the inside 50s were 16 to 8 in favour of the Sydney Swans, 17 4 in the hit outs and 15 4 in the clearances. So they were just smashed in that second term after being good early. And the and the defenders, Wait and Thornton, have been pretty good. I know Lachlan and Hall. It's just the peripheral defenders. Nick Davis got on top of three goals. Just the positioning of the Carlton boys. I'm sure Dennis Pagan would have been talking about the guys around the stoppages against Sydney, especially four to the centre for Sydney, because that is the difference in the end. The four-goal margin is probably due to Carlton spectating the ball too much. Still blue skies here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Sydney by 27, about to get the second half underway. Lee Colbert. Dwayne, yes, Anthony Kudafiti starting on the bench for Carlton. And young Hartwell, it's actually his other leg, Dwayne. So uh, probably if there's any consolation, it's not the one he's injured last year. So back to you, boys. That's good news for Adam Hartlett that it's not the hamstring he tore off the bone. From the ball up to start this second half, Jolly. The clearance for Sydney. High kick. O'Keefe flies and held it for a long time and long enough according to the umpire. Spokes the pass. Davis. He had a quarter out. Three goals in the second term. Claims he marked that one. Umpire would have none of it. Rakes it in again. Little toe poke to Fosdyke. Ablett. Schneider. Centering kick, goal square, Barry Hall's down there, lurking also, Matthews tries to fend off, got Carazzo high, and he gets a kiss for his trouble. It looks like the change has been made on Davis, uh, Houlihan has gone for the Davis matchup. Carazzo wide, and Murphy, the big leap, can't bring the mark down. Thornton, off the deck, tough for Kennedy, overran it slightly, Jolly. And he gets the push in the back, Jolly. Kennedy a little untidy. 73 plays, 46. If you've just joined us, the Blues led by 26 points halfway through the opening term. But it's been all the Swans since then. No mark to Wiggins. Murphy. The handball out. Wiggins makes amends. Back to Thornton. Kennedy wide and doesn't complete the mark. Got a touch on it before it crossed the boundary line. And Bryce Gibbs, surprisingly enough, having a spell on the bench, gentlemen. Saw him limp off the ground at half time. Get Lee Cole just to check on Gibbs to see if he'll take any further part. Well, their number one draft choice has played every game this year in his debut season. He has been good. Short passes. Speaking of good, from Jude Bolton, it was perfect to O'Keefe. Just travelled the required 15. And now Barry Hall with ease. That's where you can't relax as the defender. I think uh, half the crowd and certainly half the defensive half for Carlton thought that uh, O'Keefe was going to have a shot on goal. But just uh, Barry Hall worked very hard off the ball. Second lead, pushed off his opponent and uh, got a nice shot on goal from 30 metres out dead in front. Already got one for the afternoon, Barry Hall. Nice off the boot. That's oh, gorgeous. He's got two. It was a great lead from Hall, O'Keefe, Hall, the usual suspects there. As we see O'Keefe and Hall together congratulating each other. But it was the Carlton midfielders, Lynch, you're spot on. They hesitated. They had to get back and fill that hole there. If you're going to be free, get in the corridor. You can't allow Hall. There's not much weight can do in that situation there, leading straight up the middle of the ground. The wingers or a midfielder had to sprint as soon as O'Keefe marked that ball to try and guard that space. In the modern game, you just can't have spectators. Everyone's got to be on the ball all the time. 29 goals for the season now, Barry Hall. Probably won't get near the 78 goals, 38 that he kicked last year. But the Swans just gaining a little momentum at the right end of the season. Matthews, caught by Bentick. No one gets the clearance. Another ball up. Matthews done a very good job on Mark Murphy. You've got a feel for young Mark Murphy. His second uh, year of league football is getting tagged. We just see Matthews all over Mark Murphy there. Mark Murphy. He's done some big jobs in the last couple of weeks, Ben Matthews. has been in sensational form. Jude Bolton, speaking of good form, got it from Fosdyke, kicked a half forward. 
tackle by Lachlan, superb. Wiggins got it on, and thumped forward by Thornton. Fosdyke tries to shuffle out a handball. Simpson, their captain this afternoon, trying to inspire. We'll get another ball up. He's done a good job, Fosdyke, on Simpson. Simpson was very good last week with 28 possessions. So far, early in the third term, he's up to 11, but uh, hasn't had a big influence on the game. And the ball up. Carrazzo down to Bentick. Scotland. Looks up and sees Favola. Little nudge out from Leo Barry. He did that a couple of times in the opening term. Open Nothing goal. was played. Simpson, play on advantage. The captain's goal. That was well done. Favola presented for the ball. Played on the mark, uh, the free kick a little. There was certainly a shove from the torso of Leo Barry, but uh, Simpson was a, awake enough to run into open space in the forward 50 and had the ability to convert. That's good. He's been closely checked by Fosdyke all day, and that is very good when you find space to capitalise on those opportunities. First goal for the day. They'll need a couple more out of the midfield for Carlton to give him a chance. The first goal of the afternoon for Simpson, 79 to 52. And it's not an insurmountable lead. If the Blues can replicate their first term work rate, they'll be back into it in a short space of time. Jude Bolton to Schneider. Handball inboard, Matthews, Ty Canelli, who hasn't had a spectacular afternoon. Inside 50, both thumb clear of Davis kick around the body from Fosdyke is out of bounds on the full. Good pressure from Carlton. Positive signs here early. Really forcing Sydney wide and making them earn every possession. Thornton back pocket. Thought about coming to the open side. Sends a long bomb out of the area but it's all Sydney to Bolton. Malcheski. He can load up from there. From 50. Kicks from 49. Superb. He's the best player on the ground at the moment, Malczewski. 16 possessions, six inside 50s, one goal, one from the half back line. Hell, he's improving over the last 12 months, has been exceptional. Played every day for the Swans this year. He's the modern day sweeper, and more importantly, Lynchy, he can really finish off. Most kicks are lace out, and that was just a magnificent goal through the middle of the ground. And through the middle of the ground is the key. They're just doing all they can to dominate the corridor when they've got the ball or when they haven't. Nick Malczewski, who's been on an alcohol ban, self-imposed, since his mum's wedding on January 18 this year. Won't touch it until the end of the season. From the ball up. He's really playing some good football too this year. Still yet to have a flag next to his name. Emergency. In the flag win back in 2005, Nick Malczewski. Kennedy tried to get a handball out. Bauer, Kennedy, Bannister. And Fev, now the run. Fev wants to turn and go back to the goal. Goal away, Scotland. Scotland. Scotland from 48, normally good. This time very good as well. They won't be blown away, the Blues. Coral football at its best there. They took the opposition on. Alistair, they went through the middle of the, the ground and the hands were terrific. We see Bannister take the opposition on through the corridor. It was great leading from the forwards. They led away from Scotland knowing he had space to lead into. The last minute we see Bolton try and put some pressure on, but that's a great goal. Carlton really opening up their forward line at the centre bounces to force the Carlton midfield to run and carry and kick some great goals. Reliable Heath Scotland. Kicks his first of the afternoon, third in the best and fairest last year behind Lance and Fev. And Paul Roos, the normally calm Paul Roos, knows that he's running out of time to get his team into the top four. From the ball up, Everett having a spectacular day at the office to half forward to O'Loughlin. Nice collect, shoots out a handball. Kirk tried to shuffle a kick out. Schneider going nowhere, ball up. And Carlton just trying to rotate their forward line. They had Walker deep in the square, and Leo Barry picked him up. 
Uh, but now Barry's out to Favola. Walker's pushed up into the defence to be a loose man in defence. On the ball up, free kick. It'll go to Kennedy. Good to see Bryce Gibbs out there just on the top of the screen. Mm. Doesn't look like he's moving too freely, but hopefully he'll uh, loosen up. It was a free off the ball. It went to Carazzo. Good commitment, Bannister. Thumped it down to Wiggins. Kicks towards Lappin. And Lappin's one of those players that can kick multiple goals. He's very handy on the ground and certainly in the air for a, for a small body. He can take an overhead mark. Just ran forward of his opponent in Canelli. And that's a that's good use of the body. Just sort of protected the ball and took a nice mark in the end. Important kick this for Matthew Lappin in game 248. Plays his 250th in a couple of weeks. Less than 150 players in the history of the AFL VFL have done it. So he's in elite company. And he kicks the goal when needed. He's been a very good player for Carlton since crossing over St Kilda. Matty Lappin had a fairly quiet day starting on the bench. But you're right, Lynchy, if he can just float through and kick a couple here, they desperately need to take the pressure off Favola. Favola's trying hard, but Leo Barry's doing a very good job. So they need other avenues. Fisher's been OK. They just need Lappin just to hopefully try and come in and kick a couple of goals this quarter. Started on the bench, Matthew Lappin. Working his way into it now. First goal of the afternoon for him. 85 plays, 64. Back to 21 points. From the ball up. Fosdyke going nowhere. Umpire Chris Cavillans says, I'll have it. And as we just saw, centre breaks, last seven have gone in favour of the Swans, and they have certainly dominated clearances across the whole ground today, and that has gone uh, well and truly in favour of them, 29 to 14. Carazzo third man up to Fisher, back to Scotland, gets away from Fosdyke, has a bounce, a little too arrogant perhaps, got the kick away, full forward, oh, Halpin's down there, Adam Goods gets back and thumps it through for a behind. Didn't mind at least Scotland trying to back himself, make something happen, and uh, he ran, the bounce wasn't uh, executed well, but I think the decision wasn't too bad. Tough to burn off Fosdyke as a former national 400 metre runner as a kid. He can turn it on from the wing O'Keefe. This boy can run a little bit too O'Keefe. Toward Barry Hall. Didn't quite read it. Gets it back from O'Loughlin. Gives the don't argue to two. Shrugs a tackle. Got one a little high. Matthews wide. O'Loughlin. And he can kick it from there. Barry Hall wants the ball long and deep. But Mickey O'Loughlin's turned his back on the goals. And that's a sure sign that he'll <laughs> set for a shot on goal. Now he'll give the little dummy as if I was going to pass it off, but no <laughs> intentions. <laughs> There's his numbers for the afternoon. Just the one goal for Michael O'Loughlin. And he's had a very accurate year, misses this time. Only a behind. He's kicked 25 goals, eight for the season, Michael O'Loughlin. So a rare miss for him this year. One of the most accurate kicks in the competition. Poor decision again, went to a two-on-one. Schmidt, Kirk, McVeigh, can't mark, it's Paul Houlihan. Up there across the line. Just haven't thought their way out of their kickouts, Carlton, for most of the game. As we see here, two-on-one situation, always going to be very tough under a long ball. 21 points the margin, ball slapped down towards Walker. It was an accidental toe out of play. Might be paid deliberate. Ball in. And Carlton are pushing big numbers back. They've got every player on the ground in their defensive half. Favola is up over the centre circle. And uh, as we've talked about, they've tried to set this up all day to have their forwards running back towards goal into space. Palm down from Everett. Matthews. Mount Chesky. High bomb. Paul under it. Well done, Thornton. Yeah, got there with the fist. Thumped it towards the line and... Got a fortuitous bounce. Schmidt couldn't grab it. Ball in. Just need to see that from your fellow defenders when you've got a one-on-one -on -one situation with a high ball. Have the courage to come off your direct opponent like Thornton did there. That was great play. Sydney's won the last nine games it's played against Carlton. And Paul Roos is seven from seven coaching against Carlton. On track to make it eight from eight. Bannister chips it wide. Simpson. No one to go to. Forced to hold it up. Now Fisher leads short, 
tough one though. Kick made it impossible for him. Goods. Halpin tried to corral him. Goods to Craig Bolton. Fosda. It's been a good battle here in Scotland. Barry Hall. Too far out to score. Back towards Craig Bolton. It's cut off by Halpin. Bit too cute there, Barry Hall. It was a good run for Halpin to go with uh, Craig Bolton, who's a very good distance runner, and stayed with him. Blues on the rebound. Bentick. Long, Lappin, half held, half grabbed. Canelli knocks it down, Lappin had it, lost it, got it. Oh, oh, wow. it. Unbelievable goal, the Blues are back in it. Great to see Lynchy just forcing the ball forward. Good coaching from Dennis Pagan, as you called, the forwards are all up the ground. It allows the Carlton midfield to run and carry, and that's a dangerous kick for any defender there. Just a long kick. Great contest. We see here Lappin just holding his feet. That was the key. Held his feet in the contest. A lot of scrimmages around. Two Sydney players go to ground. Lappin holds his feet. Very good goal there. As you just see the replay there. Richard's trying in vain to smother the ball. But you've got to hold your feet in the contest. Lappin. A rabbit out of the hat. Two goals now. And the Blues back in it. 86-71. to Has played 15 minutes third term. Bentick tried to steal it from the ball up. Murphy forced to lay a tackle. Carlton haven't got a lot of game breakers up in the forward half. Certainly for Vola's one, he's been quiet. And Lappin's another one that can keep multiple goals. He's pushed up into the midfield now. And as we've talked about, he'll try to turn Canelli around and run back. From the ball up. O'Keefe spins out of trouble. Got one to the ear. It'll come back. Carlton can kick big scores quickly. They do concede big scores the way they're playing this year, but they are the third most highest scorer for the season, even though they're 14th on the ladder. Swan's forward line trying to huddle up to create space. Carlton have put outriders around the huddle. O'Keefe. Good lead, O'Loughlin. Perfect lead, O'Loughlin. Although the Blues read it. Thornton left it behind. O'Loughlin beats all three of them to Hall. Gets around, snaps, high, very, very high. Touched on the line, perhaps. Oh, and, he's there, it, and he's marked it. That's just not, that's not good. It was firstly Thornton letting the ball go behind, which is just a cardinal sin for a defender. Then one metre out under a high ball. Now, that's very hard, even if you buy yourself to mark the ball. But when you've got six or seven players there, you must jump and get a fist on that, surely. He's become a cult figure here. He's made longer pucks, Peter Everett. He kicks the goal. The attempt was there, Lynchy, from Kennedy, but just not the technique, unfortunately. unfortunately. Maybe two Carlton go, players go up. Play the percentages. Had to kill that ball. Yeah, when you're that, that close to the goal line, you can even fumble it across the line. You must have strong body. Even small players must go out, make a big pack, big contest, get the momentum of the ball going over the line. But class act Peter Everett, but shouldn't be allowed to take a mark in that situation. Dennis Pagan will be absolutely rope bull with that one. Having another good afternoon, Peter Everett. Eight possessions, two goals, 24 hit outs. And he's back in the middle against O'Halpin. Doesn't win this one. Fosdyke caught a little high. He's played dropping the ball. Okay. It'll come back. The Carlton's intensity, like the first quarter, that's going to be the key to this game, Lynch, is to maintain the intensity and the pressure for four quarters. O'Halpin to Houlihan. Long. Kennedy. Free, Free kick. It'll go Carlton's way. Two to Freedies. It was just held, I think it was Craig Bolton, just got, I think, the arms around the waist. Couldn't get away from his opponent, and Kuda Fees will be paid the free kick. Quick response, very important one. Hasn't had a big afternoon, Anthony Kuda Fides. Well Gets himself on the score sheet, gives his team a chance. And that's what you need uh, some big bodies up in the forward line to make a contest. Now, that was a free kick, but he's an intimidating type of player, Kuda Foodies. Craig Bolton was worried about where he was. He was going to be on the end of a long ball and just held him off the ball. Actually, it wasn't Craig Bolton. Can't quite see who that is. Yes, it was. It was Bolts. And uh, just a presence. Kuda Foodies has a presence. Hasn't had a lot of the ball, but he has put pressure on the defensive half of the Swans and got a goal. Was rewarded. 
Only the seventh possession of the afternoon for Anthony Kudafidis coming off a 26 possession game last week. First goal for him for the afternoon. We've played 19 minutes, third term. Important takeaway. High towards Barry Hall. Big fly. Didn't mark. O'Keefe the crumb. Schneider flies through and goals. If Carlton can somehow negate the centre square clearances in this game of football, they are a super chance to be right in this game of football. As you see, Hall fly for a mark. May have been able to take it out in front. But at least it's called to spillage and really does put the back line under the pump. But that was great collect from Ryan O'Keefe. Great hands, great front and square. Quick hands to Snyder for a great goal. But Carlton need to work at the centre clearance. If they can somehow negate Sydney's presence in there, they're a chance. First goal of the afternoon for Adam Schneider. And it's back to a 21-point margin. It's a goal fest at the moment. Still 10 minutes to travel. It'll be a long term. Our Halpin inside 50. Dempster got the toe poke on the ball. Ablett, Matthews, open forward line for Sydney. Got to go here. Wake comes hard. Good boy, Met Wake. by Bevan. And he's got the reward for going in lower and harder than his opponent. That was good work. It was going to be a uh, pretty nervous period for him. He knew he was going back into strife, but got rewarded and a bit of a sore knee out of that as well. Especially when you know you're going to cop one lynchy. It's all right to go low and hard, but you know there's traffic coming your way. That is great play, Jared White. Young towards Kennedy. Kennedy can't mark. His hands, Kennedy. Just needs to work on his marking. Lappin to Favola. Scoops it up. And the goal fest might continue here. He's been caught, wait, but he's staying on. Great mark for Vola, but I've just watched Kennedy today and his abilities. We see Jared Wade low and hard, just head over the ball. That's a great sign for any young player. Keep your eyes on the ball, wear the contact. Now, Fev's kicked one goal, two so far today. Had the eight possession. Started off the game pretty well. Important to convert this one. He's got the journey, no worries. Can tend to... Uh, just stab at these sometimes from the close range. It's been a long time since he's had the ball in his hands. About 20 minutes of actual play time, Brendan Favola. And just stabbed at that one and didn't kick it. He kicks the ball 60 metres, but he gets inside the forward 50 and just punches them through. I think there he got too close to the man on the mark, which forced him to kick the ball high. Normally very accurate. Quick kick in. Malczewski. Held up. And now takes off and kicks to the wing. Jolly's down there. Strong in front of O'Halpin. 20 get, points to margin. He'll get stronger, O'Halpin. Disappointed in that effort there. Just needs a couple of big pre-seasons in the gym. Schneider stayed down. Rolls it towards full forward. Pushed on the kick. And is that out of bounds on the full? Just bounced in front of the line. But yeah, I agree, O'Halpin will get stronger, but uh, probably the technique, um, not used to body on body, jumping, getting the fist on it. We just see here, it came off the toe and just landed inside. Perfect palm down, O'Halpin to Murphy, to Lappin. He's actually had his hand on the ball a little bit, O'Halpin, as far as the centre clearances goes. He's got the taps. For Vola. Well done, Fev. Hard commitment at the ball, knocked it down to Kudafidis. Sends it long, Kennedy again with a one-on-one. -on -one. Craig Bolton, Kennedy, tough man to beat, Craig Bolton. He's that been was a, a win. All-Australian defender. He's the fish John West rejected, really. Brisbane, <laughs> in their prime, gave him away because they couldn't fit him in. That's how strong they were. But that was great science for Favola there. Caused a spillage. Back into play. Uh, Halpin. Schmidt got the kick away. It's all about the bounce, and it was a tough one. O'Loughlin, Fosdyke. Everett's leading back. He's the only one inside 50, and he's got it. Yeah, that's, that's the strength of Everett, Alistair. His ability to win the ball in the ruck effort, but then to push forward. Barry Hall's come up for a spell. Different matchup, weight on Everett. That was a great kick, great lead. As we see Favola causing a great spillage there a minute ago. At his best, a legitimate forward, Peter Everett. Already got two for the afternoon. He loves it off the boot. It was pretty. He's got three. 
That was the Sydney Swans at their best. Their rebound off half-back. They ran the ball well through the corridor, which opens up both sides to the leading forward. Now, Peter Everett had a lot of space out to his left, ran into that space, and very hard for a defender. And Spud, you and I both played a lot of football at full-back. It's not a great feeling when you're one-on-one -on -one in that 50 and the ball is coming through the centre very quick. So Peter Everett capitalised on that opportunity. Good kick on goal. Three goals to the Spider, 104 to 78. We've played 24 minutes in this third term. Still over six remaining. It's been a high scoring quarter. O'Halpin. Fosdyke. O'Halpin. Bannister. Wrapped up. Back to O'Halpin. High inside 50 towards Favola. Good one on one battle with Barry. Fisher to his own advantage. Might try and soccer it, doesn't. Out of play is a win for the Blues. They'll get a ball into the danger zone. A behind would have simply turned it over to Sydney. And uh, O'Halpin's had a bit of a spark into the midfield. Getting his hand on the ball, jumps around. Not a lot of structure to it, but he's certainly enthusiastic. O'Halpin and Jolly go at it. And Malcheski tied up, going nowhere. We'll get another ball up. Now, it's much easier said than done, but Carlton need to clear this out in their forward uh, area, have a stoppage. They must try to spread it out and stretch the defence of the Sydney Swans so they can have a shot on goal. Very difficult with these sort of numbers around. So it's too far out for the Swans to rush it behind here. Although, saying that, Adam Goods rushes it behind. One three one three win. kicks been found anyway, has it? Yeah, it has. One win for Carlton has been Houlihan. He's had Davis taken off the ground. Davis kicking three goals in the first half, so some positive signs here for the Blues. Now Chesky finds Craig Bolton. Jude Bolton calls for it. So too does Fosdyke. They're both in the general vicinity. Tackle laid by well Jude. Done. Scotland got it out to Bentick. Murphy with some space. Now wait. Favola calls for it back to the square. Now he leads front and square. Can't mark it. Gathers his own crumb. Shoots it out to Gibbs. Houlihan. High bomb. Fisher from five deep flies but can't mark it. Ball comes back towards Simpson. Plays for the free. Doesn't get it. Gathers the leather. Canelli to Goods. Almost dacked. And is that deliberate? It rolls around the boundary kindly and we'll get a ball in. Good signs from the Carlton forwards here, just really forcing the issue. Everett to do the ruck work. This is where Kennedy needs some support. Someone to jump over the top. He got there late and spent all his beans trying to get to the contest and couldn't go at the contest. Canelli. Handball out, misses the target. Murphy needs to hit the target. Sees Lappin and Favola long. Lappin flies. Three swans fly with him. Jude Bolton caught. Dragged down. Bentick, he's over it. Caught by Dempster. Ball up. Carlton's contested possessions have been terrific this quarter. Like the first quarter, they have won the contested possession. So the 50-50 ball has been a real positive for the Blues this third quarter. I need to turn their last quarter form around there to grab this victory. They've only won one last quarter for the year, the Blues. Scotland just pokes it inside 50 and wide. And a good mark taken by Simpson. Yeah. Good decision, Scotland. Backed himself to play on and hit the target on his left foot. Be a difficult shot from out wide. But these are the ones that Carlton must capitalise on. They find it very difficult to have shots on goal from the corridor. Sydney just dominate that sort of region of the ground. So Nick Malcheski with the most possessions on the ground for the afternoon. 28 minutes gone, third term. Important kick. Brings it back. But not enough. Almost a mark on the line. Not paid for Vola. Asks. And doesn't get. Lee Colbert. Keep an eye on the bench, boys, for Carlton. They've got a few injury concerns. Kennedy just came off. Carrazzo and also Jared Wade copped the heavy one. Bryce Gibbs is an interesting one. He's not 100% out there, boys. Seems to be a leg injury. It's bad news. Depths to wide. Kirk 
Oh, well done. That's experience and a strong body there to hold his ground and take a very good contested mark. He identified where the ball was going, held his opponent away from that spot, and then jumped to that spot at the last minute. Jude Bolton back to Kirk. Everett can line up for yet another. Peter Everett, tell me. He's in the Great ruck. afternoon. Yeah, he's in the ruck now, pushing forward. So, Satano helped and just had to be aware of Everett pushing forward. He was guarding space in front of Barry Hall, but when you direct opponent, and it's Peter Everett at this stage, pushes forward, you must man him up. This is for number four. From the paint of the 50, into the goal square, Barry Hall, massive fly, Kirk. Perfect roving goal. That's a good spot for Dee, and that's Brett Kirk summed up by that goal. He's such a professional uh, in this team. He leads by example. He plays a role week in, week out, and a, the role for a small player in this sort of situation is you're not going to take the big mark. So get to the front in case there is a spill. The defenders are going to try to punch forward, so you run there. That's what Davis was doing early. That's what Kirk did on that occasion. Took the ball from a good punch back. Good snap. Goal. Out to a 30-point lead. They can smell September, Sydney. Played in the last two AFL Grand Finals. Important four points this afternoon if they can hold this form to the final siren. And the ball up. Jude Bolton tried to slip a handball out. Hits Kirk to Goods. Craig Bolton holds it up at half-back. The Blues, of course, will get a priority pick in the draft. They'll get pick one if they don't win another game for the year. If they do win another game, number one pick won't be theirs unless they finish bottom of the ladder. Craig Bolton spears it, finds Jude Bolton. This is what's picked up with the Sydney Swans over the last month. The ability to hit targets. Certainly in the first two months of the season, they were very sloppy going forward, just turned the ball over on a regular occurrence. Now this has got much better. Good. Wobbles it to Everett. And of course, this guy's form getting a little bit better too, Lidgey. That certainly helps. And once again, just exposing the lack of experience of Satano helping, just the lack of ability to put at least body into the contest. If you can't hit the ball, you must at least put body on body and hopefully cause a spillage. But that is very good player. Starting to find a rich vein of form and get some fitness under the belt. Lines up for his fourth, Peter Everett. The new cog figure in Sydney misses to the near side. Only a behind. So the Blues don't win another game for the year and finish low on the ladder. They'll get a couple of picks in the first four. Maybe one and three, one and four. Which will help them rebuild Help them immensely, really. Simpson. They need early draft picks, and there's some good ones, according to the experts, out of last year's under, last week's under-18 carnival. That will be taken the top four or five. Davis, out of play. I think they'd like a big map cruiser, a 200 centimetre, 100 kilo uh, ruckman forward would be very handy. But I'm sure they're not looking, focusing on that just at the moment. I'm but, sure some of their administrators are. Oh, probably quietly behind the scenes, but there's players out there who've got a bit of pride, and I'm sure Dennis Pagan has got uh, nothing no. other than victories on his mind. Yeah, that can be guaranteed Dennis Pagan. He wants to win internal trials. From the ball in. Bantic. Walker. Wobbles it in the Favola direction. Goods gets back and... Collects it. Dempster runs into a three-pack of blues. We'll get a ball up inside a minute to three-quarter time. Goods has been able to double team for Volar a couple of times. So Bannister just has to get out of the road, get either deep or up the ground to allow for Volar to compete one-on-one. -on -one. Goods shuffled the handball out, missed the target. Scotland got it from Simpson, spears it to Favola, and it travelled the required 15. And he can cut the margin back on the three-quarter time siren. 15.1 metres, I would have thought. <laughs> yeah. You would have thought after his last shot, as you described, Spud, he was a little bit close to the man on the mark. 
take those extra couple of steps back. I would have thought he would get the journey by about 20 metres and kick through the ball. To cut it back to 25 points. Had the last shot of the second term. But it was about 70 from goal. This one from 45. He certainly got a bit of piece of that one. Kicked the ball fairly well. A bit of a high fade, but uh, just uh, hit the post. Unfortunate. They were desperate for a goal before three-quarter time. One goal for to Favola. Three-quarter time here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. The Sydney Swans on the march toward September. Perhaps four points well within their grasp here this afternoon. The Blues started well, led by 26 points, Carlton, halfway through the opening term. But at three-quarter time, it's the Sydney Swans by 30. 17-9, 111 to Carlton, 12-9, 81. What a time at the Sydney Cricket Ground, and it's the Swans by 30 points at the last change. 17-9, 111 to Calvin, 12-9, 81. 259 to 222 disposal-wise. Contested possessions fairly even as well. But the centre breaks, Sydney 18 to 7. Peter Everett having a good afternoon at the office. Lee Colbert on the boundary line. Yes, I'm Danny with Peter Berbikoff. Mate, uh, just haven't been able to shake him, although your form's been pretty good. Yeah, it's sort of been in bursts, really, with uh, how they've been moving the footy. I mean, it's a bit of a game of chess. Both sides trying to open up their forward line, and we know that they can score you know, a lot of goals very quickly. So it's just a matter of making sure that we don't get sucked up into the middle of the play and that we've got guys helping out Leo against Fev and some of the other runners that are bolting forward. Well, you are looking after the backs. Ruzi had a bit of a chat with the boys. What do you have to say? Well, it was more so about that, really. I mean... You know, if there's plenty of numbers down there, let's make sure that we're supporting against Leo. If you want to get sucked up into the midfield, let's just make sure that we're not cars and caravans around there and helping out. Thanks for your time, mate. Thanks, Lee. Light at the tunnel getting a little brighter for the Sydney Swans. They can see the four points. They can see September. Thirty-point lead at three-quarter time to Sydney. Players just moving back to position. We'd like to think that Carlton could fight their way back, but it's near on impossible here at the SCG. Well, they stemmed the flow a little bit in that quarter. Inside 50s were 15 apiece. They were outscored by 3.62 to 5.5, so they've had 10 shots on goal to 8. They've just got to make sure they capitalise on every opportunity that when they do go inside their 50, as they did on that occasion, just missed a few easy shots. They'll be under enormous amount of pressure to make sure that they shut down the run the Sydney Swans have controlled the corridor outside the first 15 minutes of the uh, first quarter. They've controlled it since then. Not only the run, but their ruck work. Everett, that quarter, five disposals, four marks, eight hit-outs, two goals, one. And Brett Kirk, Sydney about 87 contested possessions and 34 clearances. Kirk on his own has had 10 contested possessions and six. Everett and Kirk have been absolutely sensational in what this I, game of footy. What I can't believe, though, there hasn't been... There, I think once for the day, someone's jumped third up to help their Ruck, Carlton Ruckman out. Correct, right. They've only won one last quarter for the year, the Blues. They led this game by 26 points halfway through the opening term. To start this final term, they're down by 30. From the ball up, O'Keefe tried to get it away. Quick kick out of the congestion. Lappin slapped it to Houlihan. Ball bounced unkindly for him. Carazzo too high on Kirk. And it was Brett Kirk, one of the players that really cranked it up a gear and last week when Sydney were under siege. He was one of the men to drag them over the line. And he knows what's on the end of this. Made the commitment, got caught high. And that was like technical error there. And he slips it to Barry Hall. Can't mark. White. Handball out. Turns it over. Schneider. Kick one like that in the third term and slides it through to open the last. 
Dennis Pagan be absolutely filthy about the 50 metre penalty. And then the handball back in through the corridor is just uh, very, very dangerous. Just a, once again, poor decision making under pressure. And uh, you needed to start the quarter better. And to give a 15 metre penalty, the technique in the tackle was, was poor. Got him high, but you accept that. But gee, the 50 metre penalty, it just really hurts. Also, the possession from Wade. If you're under pressure like that, if you're going to defend, defend it wide. Not in the corridor. Second goal of the afternoon to Adam Schneider. And the Swans had their biggest lead of the game from the ball up. Matthews got a kick away, half a kick. Carazzo caught. We'll get another ball up. Swans still in tight. But Kuda Fides versus Jolly at the moment. So Carlton look for a bit of mobility, but you definitely need a third man up in that situation with Kuda and Jolly. Especially when there's big numbers. A free kick in the uh, congestion there will go to, I think it's Houlihan. But with this, what a congestion. The third up jumper will punch the ball clear, and that's the real strength of the Sydney Swans. In tight, clear the congestion, give yourself a chance. Mark Murphy, the recipient of the free, turns it over to Craig Bolton. Everett having a day out. O'Keefe Hall's on the move. It's in front. Good fist by White, and that's deliberate. And the umpire says no, throw it in. That was great work from O'Keefe. I and mean, he's a half forward that pushes up around half back, covers an enormous amount of territory, and has also got the class to put the ball in front of his leading forwards. Kuda Fides grabbed Jolly's arm in the ruck and free against, kick off the ball. Yeah, against Matthews, just uh, was holding off the ball again uh, for Murphy. Murphy getting a couple of possessions early, another free kick off the ball, this one to Fisher. Yeah. Well, a couple of free kicks there, I just saw Bryce Gibbs go off the ground, Lee Colbert, are you down there, is he injured? Yeah, he's just come off, he doesn't seem to be, he's not, uh, not worried at all, but uh, Teddy Richards just ate the ball and hit him <laughs> right in the scone. Fisher with the high bomb. Oh, Halpin. Lappin Mark. Was it Lappin? No. I, I thought Lappin had it first. Yeah, I thought he had a fair piece of it. <laughs> so the team mark's been paid. Oh, Halpin from 60. Big long launch. And thump out of play. That long kick there, Dwayne. It had to go to the fat side about yeah. 20 metres out from goals. Okay to kick the ball long, but it's right on the goal line. It doesn't give the forward any where to move or run. Suits the backman. Yeah, you can just punch it through with ease. From the ball in O'Halpin. Wiggins. Kick half smothered. O'Keefe in defence. Sends it to O'Loughlin. Dives, marks. Yeah, had to take the mark. He was out number two to one and had no support from anyone within about 50 metres. So important that he had the uh, closing speed to take that chest mark. To Schmidt. Fourth season on the list for Tim Schmidt. Important year for him. And he finds Barry Hall on the wing. Very good duel this one, Wade and Hall. Hall's found some ball, but Wade has made him earn every possession. To half forward, Abbott whacked it in. Off to O'Keefe. High inside 50, McVeigh getting back. He can play on, and goal. How easy do you like it? Just as my co-commentator throws the pen with disappointment, it was far too easy. It was a long high ball in which O'Keefe drove forward and McVeigh had a lot of time to sit under it. Should have been better. There was numbers around to make a spoil and then to drop your bundle and make the play on well, was very you, disappointing. When you've got an open forward like that, Heath Scotland had to get goal side of McVeigh. He spectated the ball and allowed McVeigh said, OK, I'm going to open up the goals for you so you can kick an easy goal. Two goal afternoon for Jared McVeigh in game number 73. 123 plays 81. And the Swans know they've got it now. Four points of theirs. Schmidt tried to grab it. Kudafidis does. To Houlihan, Walker, Scotland. Fisher, strong hands. In front of Ted Richards. Houlihan short, can play on. Need to shoot from 50. Sends it long. No one's in the goal square for Carlton. Jolly 
held it long enough. It was just a nothing kick that one. It was sort of uh, to that one, two metres out from goal. It had to have a real ping or pull the ball to 15, 20 metres out just so hopefully a leading forward could get to the drop of the ball. Davis free in the back pocket. Mount Chesky runs through trouble, turns it over. Poor handball from Bannister. Young tried to make it okay. He missed the target as well. Schneider, McVeigh. They're just pulling the wings off them at the moment. Just playing with them. Abler holds it up on the wing. All the way back to Leo Barry. Yeah, the Swans are always happy to chip it around through the middle until something opens up. There's space over the back for Leo Barry to drive it into the four under Barry Hall. Barry Hall says send it short. He sends it too short. Thornton, Walker, Houlihan. Not a lot to go to. Forced to hold it up. Well, Fed's Keeps got a looking. Bit of space up. He's lost his opponent because I don't think he chased yeah. Leo Barry down the field. So Leo Barry will be a little bit spent now. Forced to spoil. Hits Young. He can load up from 50 if he wants to. Now's the time to go long. Just at the top of the square, he's got a one-on-one. -on -one. The Ross Young spears it. it. Brad Fisher takes the mark and can get himself a little bit of a consolation prize. He's tried hard all afternoon, Brad Fisher. Kick one in the second term. It's looked like the only leading forward that's likely to take a mark and grab the game by the scruff. Mm. In fact, he's got two goals for the afternoon. So lining up at goal number three. Shouldn't miss from here. Casually. Makes the goal up by do a bit of work, but it's there. That's a very good goal there from Brad Fisher. Kicked his third goal. Great forward movement. Equally good kick. Just kicked the ball, weighted it perfectly. Allowed Brad Fisher to run onto the ball, run and jump in a high. And that is a magnificent mark there from Brad Fisher. They're just hanging in there, Carlton. They just need to get a, obviously three or four goals in a row now, but it's very difficult. Everett's had a spell on the bench, back into the ruck, big Peter Everett. Eight minutes in, final term. Dennis Pagan, under siege at the moment. From all angles, from the ball up. Everett knocks it down. Matthews caught. Simpson couldn't trap it. Bauer got it out. Carazzo loops the handball wide, cut off by Jude Bolton. Always where Angels fear to tread. Jude Bolton gets it out to Canelli. O'Loughlin, Abler. And now Canelli who ran on. The backs are really starting to run now, Sydney Swans. That was a perfectly weighted kick. Just pulled the kick, just a 30 metre chip pass. And hits toward the attacking 50 to Malcheski. Well, he started half back. This is his 23rd disposal. 12 handball received, six inside 50s, going for his second goal. Well, he has a kick for goal normally. He hasn't got a premiership medallion, as we said earlier. Most of his teammates have. Emergency in the grand final win. Yeah. And he sends it home. The Swans have it wrapped up. You would think he's going to be a part of this team for a long time. No wonder they've re-signed him. He's been a very exciting prospect, especially this year, but over the last uh, 18 months. Exciting player, very good athlete. His skills are silky clean. And uh, he has just got the poise now, and he fits in. He looks like he's got some leadership material about him as well. Very impressive player, and anyone that can take shots from outside 50 and convert them like he does is a valuable asset. They're a wide and varied bunch, the Sydney Swans outfit. Ty Canelli, preparation for games on Sundays. He goes to church. Before the game, Nick Malchester, he listens to corn on his iPod. From the ball up. Handball out to Scotland. Free kick's been found. And it'll come back to the wing. Schneider. Sure to get to Malchester. He wants another one from 60. Barry Hall's on the move. Ooh, he kick. leaves it for O'Loughlin. 
either of them could have marked it. And Barry Hall says you can have it. He's the best player on the ground, Malcheski, no doubt. The way he's able to run, but he's ball use. And why wouldn't you give it to him in that situation there? He turned and go, and O'Loughlin was already in the spot. That's a magnificent passage of play. Good forward play, good midfield play, legit. A bit of cloud over this man during the week, had the flu. And there was a player on standby before the game, but he's got through the game pretty well. And I'd be very happy the way he's pulled up. He's kicked 26 for the year. He's now got 27. And the Swans have the four points. Ten goal kickers again, Lynchy. They really do spread the workload, Sydney. A couple of multiple goal kickers in Schneider, Kirk, Malcheski, now O'Loughlin, Davis with three. But they're a potent forward line. Always had a great impact, though it keeps being okay, but it's their ability to share the load. They give it to the player in the best spot in any situation. No, Lockham was the man in the best spot there, and he kicked truly. Well, Game-wise, he's the greatest swan of all time. Paul Roos, heartbeat really gets above about 65 beats a minute, even when he's under pressure. From the ball up, Everett down, Matthews back to Everett. Dempster lurking inside, 50. Ball bounced kindly for him, really. Back onto it. Barry Hall. A little don't argue. Into traffic. Out to Fosdyke. Snaps around the body. Oh, it's the post. Nice little snap. They've been much more efficient inside their forward 50 this week. Last week against Fremantle Dockers, they kicked 11 goals, 23 the Sydney Swans for 89 mm -hmm. points with the 59 inside 50s. And so far this week... The 21-10, so complete turnaround and just shut Carlton out. Inside 50s are up to 51. Wiggins wide, he was hoping for a help, and Simpson grabbed by Fosdyke, gets the free. Mind you, it was different conditions last week. It was pretty drizzly rain and uh, fairly cold. Bauer. Kennedy. Walker. Lappin inside 50, got hands on it, couldn't mark it, Kirk the crumb, out towards Leo Barry who couldn't grab it, Matthews does, Jude Bolton, Fosdyke, beautiful movement, Nick Davis, no one to go too long, Great just vision. pokes it up towards Dempster, can't mark, fights on but wait, grabs it, long kick back towards Young who's got a paddock, if it sits for him, Kirk's coming at him, Plenty of time, chips, Eddie Betts missed it, and the Swans on the rebound again. The kick was to the smallest man on the field, it was three on one. <laughs> three on one. Poor choice. Not a great option. Goods with the one-two, finds his old mate Michael O'Loughlin. It's a party at the moment. Jude Bolton sends it along in the Davis direction, getting back Scotland, fist of Houlihan. Young tried to knock it out, didn't. McVeigh, he can have a snap from there. Centers it to Barry Hall, not 15. Play on, around the body from Big Bad. Beautiful Barry. Misses. It's good work. Heard the umpire's call of play on. And he's got the strength just to fend off his opponent and have a snap on goal. It's great vision from McVeigh to hold. This has been some very good decision making for the Swans, which is contrasted at the other side of the ground with Carlton. Scotland plays on straight into Jude Bolton. Out of play, we'll get a ball in. That's been a problem all day, getting out uh, of their kick-outs from the defensive half. Really struggled. They've played on to them. The kicker's played on to himself on a number of occasions. just hasn't worked. 50 points the margin. Ball back into play. Walker got the handball up. Jude Bolton diving in. And he's still playing the Swans as if scores are level. Matthews, Schmidt, missed Hall. White missed the ball, got grabbed, not in possession. And Jared White to take the free. And a 50. Barry Hall has just given the umpire a bit of a spray. <laughs> but if that was the other way, Alden have got the free kick. <laughs> and, uh, oh, he might get another one here. He's giving him a fearful mm. break. 
Kick wide. And Bannister. Sends it inside 50. High ball. And a free kick off the ball. And it's downfield again yeah. for another it's, bit of talk. Is yeah, it? it's yeah. from the runner. I reckon it was from the runner. The umpire thinks Hayden Kennedy there. Look at the runner and said, you can't say that, and we'll pay the free kick. So I think Paul Ruse will inquire to where that 50 came from, but I think it might have been the runner. Well, the, we've had a runner already suspended this year for saying a few words on the footy field. And the Bombers have had to go with one runner for a couple of weeks. Lappin lines up and gets himself a little consolation prize. 250 metre penalties. What does Rosie do if it is the runner, Mitchie? Does he drag the runner? <laughs> no, he just make him get, stay out there and run and run. The umpire put his head, hand up. I mean, the Carlton player there made the most of the free kick. Now, it was either the runner or Brett Kirk was around the area. Couldn't imagine that it would be Kirk who made the, the <laughs> call, but uh, he's certainly looking in the direction of the runner, so uh, no, it'd be a discussion afterwards over a quiet cup of tea, I would have thought. Only had the eight possessions this afternoon, Matthew Lappin. Right, has kicked three goals. That's all you need from a crumbing mm. half forward. 18 minutes travelled, final term. 24,858 here at the SCG. And they're watching a couple of their stars, in fact, three of their superstars of the afternoon. Paul, Kirk and Malcheski have a sit down. Paul, of course, looks to have been dragged for that indiscretion. Half forward, no one going anywhere. Lee Colbert's down on boundary level. Did yeah. you hear what Barry Hall said, Lee? He's not real happy, boys, I tell you. There's not too many boys going near him either. Andrew Ireland copped a nice old spray and, uh, and Kirky as well, so uh, I'm not sure he's a bit upset, Daz. Okay, we'll get the lip readers in. You can Wiggins. understand why he was a bit disappointed with the free kick as well. There wasn't a lot in it. Bantick in the middle of traffic. Jude Bolton lays the tackle. And we'll get another ball up. After looking at the replay of the free kick, whether it was there or not, Kirk had the ball and give it back to another Carlton player. I wonder the umpire give it because Kirk okay. didn't give it directly back to Jared White. May have been. Good. How's that for a thump? To Schneider, to Davis. Little gift to Ablett. Back to Davis. Short to Everett. Out of the textbook. It's all happening for Paul Rose. That was a training drill. It certainly was, and he's pulling the right strings in the coaching box. He had Everett in the ruck, he had him forward, but this is corridor football at its best. When you have run and carry, that's the Swans imprimatur, and Everett took a great mark. Lines up, Peter Everett. For an afternoon for him. Four goals for the afternoon for the Spider. As Spider kicks his goal and comes from the ground. And also just a, a little thing that um, maybe Carlton may focus on afterwards. It was a shot from 35 metres out. He's going to kick the goal. But there was just no one forward of the ball. There was no one on the goal line. You just never know as a defensive half. You might as well go back, stand there, just in case he doesn't flush it off the boot. And they pulled the wrong rein with the best player on the ground because Everett's stats, 14 disposals, 30 hitouts, nine marks, four goals, one. Well, he's a rival for best on ground honours, as you said, Danny. He's having a rest. Barry Hall back on. Well, he won the argument, Bazza, when he got off. <laughs> Massive round of applause. I'm not sure if it was for Barry Hall coming back on or the applause was for Spider, who came off after what is a genuine best on ground afternoon. It was definitely for Spider, boys. Thanks for that, Colby. The crowd were going mad. Carrazzo around the body. Out of play on the full. Now, Barry Hall is actually having a chat with Hayden Kennedy right now. So, <laughs> Bruce, you might have to get him off the ground again. He's still pointing around saying, there was it me you paid the 50 against or not? Or something like that, I would have thought. I misheard him. He's just explaining. He said, particularly nasty weather. O'Keefe. Jolly. Out marks Murphy, as you would expect. Into time on now, final term. 143 to 93. So it's a spanking. It's been a massive turnaround. The Blues have just joined us, led by 26 points early in the first term, or about halfway through the opening term. It's been all Sydney since then. Leo Barry. 
Forced to get on with it. In the Barry Hall direction, flies. Fosdyke keeps it alive. Dempster can't grab it. Houlihan hacks it out of the area. Leo Barry and Favola. He keeps Favola to a poor afternoon, Leo Barry. Big fist. Davis, now Chesky. Barry Hall with the fist. Knocked it down towards Schneider. Spins around. He can have the snap oh, too. It goes Hall. to Barry Hall. Waltz is in. Welcome to the party. Send out some 100,000 sandwiches. Again, goal side of the opponent. Inchi, great play from Schneider. Jared Wade contested the ball. We see the kick from Malcheski goes to a really dangerous spot. Jared Wade contests the ball, gets involved, goes to ground. His direct opponent Hall pushes forward. Look what happens. Must hold your feet in the contest. Played a fair game, Jared Wade, but Barry Hall, very dangerous player. Great result. Back on the ground, kicks a goal. Well played by Schneider. Unselfish. Be an interesting game next week. Subiaco, West Coast Eagles v Sydney Swans. A grand final rematch in the last two years. Fosdyke out of the middle. Good fist by Kirk. White, Thornton. Good mark to Young. The last three games decided by a point. He might go Sydney, back West even, Coast. even further than that. Might be four, actually. They've been great rivals, and uh, the West Coast under a bit of pressure at the moment. The Sydney Swans have been under pressure all year. They're finding form just as the West Coast are dropping it. They're starting to find their form, got a fit and uh, full list back, whereas the West Coast are going the other direction. Wide ball. Mark Murphy. Centering kick to half forward. Good Fides. Couldn't jump. Goods. Matthews. He holds it up. The local boy, a zone selection, and he was taken by the Swans, Ben Matthews. They want their zone back, the Sydney Swans. They're asking for some recruiting concessions. Little chip kick to Fosdark is good. He sends it long. Hall and Schneider. Hall with a big fly. <laughs> <laughs> what well, a legal jump. He won't give Hayden Kennedy a spray for that one, I don't think. <laughs> wouldn't, uh, if his groins are sore, it wouldn't have done the groins too much good, but it's a good sign that actually he's yeah. attempting those. Spot on. It's a terrible kick. Davis cuts it off. Schmidt. Schneider. Almost out mark, but didn't go to ground. This is up to Brett Kirk. They love him here. He gives it back to Barry Hall. Bounces. Goals. Just rolls it through. Casual number four for Barry Hall. That last play has been indicative of Carlton's day. They're, they've made some poor decision uh, mistakes. Execution's been down. The ability under pressure to execute their skills has dropped away as the game's gone on. And uh, nothing worse there as a fullback. Wait was nowhere to be seen from Barry Hall. And he's got two goals late from the goal square. And that really hurts his stat sheet. Wade had been good for most of the day, but Hall just getting away on the scoreboard now. 31 goals for the season now for Barry Hall. And again, Carlton have conceded a massive score. Jolly thumps it down, tackled by Davis. And Dennis Pagan's not going to enjoy his week again this week. Four minutes from time. 155 plays 93. 62 point lead to Sydney. They are well and truly back in town. Kick inside 50. Bouncing ball. Bannister. Caught by Goods. Wrap around tackle. Superb. Ball up. Spudder, you've been in this unfortunate position. What sort of lonely place it is for the coach? I mean, the media sort of drumming up all the hype about maybe a coaching change at Carlton. It must be very difficult. Very lonely, Lynchy. You have lunch, dinner, breakfast in a telephone box, Mark, <laughs> with all your mates. That's yeah. how many can fit in there. But look, it is tough, and the support staff, they can support the coach as much as he likes, but it is a very lonely time. One thing you do learn is from who your mates are, and that's, uh, I'm not sure whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, but you know, you know who your friends are when you're going through these troughs. 
Possession 17 for Andrew Carrazzo. Doesn't get his first goal of the afternoon. The miss. Dennis Pagan. And as I said earlier, has served both clubs. Played for South Melbourne. And then has been a coach here for the Blues now. In some good times and now some poor times. Fighting tough and tougher by the week. Walker Favola. One of the men who's made it tough for Dennis Pagan at times. Brendan Favola kicks around the body and pulls one out of the hat. It's a good goal from Favola there, a good finish. I'm not sure whether he deserved it though because Leo Barry made all the play. He ran up the ground and there's the turnover. We see Leo Barry in the, not in the screen. Favola didn't leave the forward 50, so for mine that's an injustice. It is. They made that uh, very difficult as well. The handball was poor, but yeah, I'm with you there. You've got to chase and got to work hard right to the last uh, second of the game. Two goals four for Brendan Favola. His return game from the one game internal suspension for disciplinary reasons. And the ball up. Fosdyke around the body. Three minutes from time, Thornton comes to the open side, Scotland. Chip kick towards the wing, Jolly can't get there in time to make the spoil on Kennedy. Pavola calls for it long. It's been a job, big job for Kennedy, no help, and against Jolly and Everett, who have been in very good form now, the two Sydney big men. Dominated the hitouts, got big numbers around the ground. Hitouts 51 to 20 in favour of the uh, Swans. Leo Barry, who's been good on Favola today, Leo Barry, and collected 10 possessions of his own. Short kick from Fosdark. O'Keefe tackled. Carrazzo harasses him toward the line, and will get a ball in 221 from time. When you look at those hitouts, Lynchy, it's no wonder Sydney win the clearances, 43 to 32. Not a lot the young Carlton midfield can do when you've got a dominance in the ruck like that. And the ball in. Kirk. McVeigh. Schneider. He can go all the way. Have a bounce. Run in. He's got two. Grabs himself a third. And a half five. Great goal from Schneider. Deserved that. But I admitted two weeks ago and was obviously a short back inside, but he's come back into this team full of hunger. His performance today with all the runs. We see McVeigh has been a very good player also, but when you see Snyder running forward, forward to the centre without much pressure, there's only going to be one result there, and that is a goal. Very good player, dangerous player. They're hitting the form at the right time of the season. Again, this one's. Kicked one goal four last week, Adam Schneider. He's disappointed with his accuracy. Three straight this afternoon. A 25-goal afternoon for the Swans. Kirk going nowhere from the ball up. Dwayne, the Sydney Swans have won seven out of eight games when they've kept the opposition to 290 disposals or less. At the moment, Carlton have had 282, so they're on track again. 283. Well, they're going to ruin the stat here in a minute, Spud. No, no, 285 with one minute 44 left. 61 point lead for the Sydney Swans approaching full time. Now, Kudafidis, and when Kudafidis was at his best, he was running through the midfield. He was normally the third up jumper. He can't do it because yeah. Malchowski's taken him away from the contest, but there's no one there. And the ball in. Carrazzo shoots out a handball. O'Keefe half held. Forced to lay a tackle on Fisher. And get a ball up. Just outside attacking 50 for the Swans. Huge numbers around the ball now. Sydney just want to close the game up. Sydney just want to get away with no injuries in the last 90 seconds. Free kick. O'Halpin. Yeah, Jolly just threw O'Halpin out of the contest. It all started well for O'Halpin. Kicked the goal in the opening term and... It's gone downhill from there to half forward, Kirk. Just keeps on keeping on, Brett Kirk. Jude Bolton likewise finds McVeigh. 
Davis leads short. Fosdyke leads wide. He hits Davis, who marks on 50. And he can load up. Spud wants him to work the clock down here. 286 <laughs> possessions. They're chipping it around, risking oh. the turnover. Call play on. Now Jeske told to get on with it, not 15. Back to Davis. He pokes it. And O'Keefe marks on 50. And he can have the last possession of the game. Well, that was 10 and a half metres, that kick. That was a chip kick. Low time on umpire. Kick a point. Can't look at a few on the way out. So the 19th possession afternoon, Ryan O'Keefe. He's not on the scorecard yet for his first. It's long, but it's not strong. It's a behind. 62-point lead to Sydney. Emphatic, emphatic victory for the Swans, and they're going to scare some teams in the run-up to September. You know what? They want to play the Sydney Swans, and you wouldn't want them lowly ranked in the finals and meet them first round of the finals either. Well, they've got a couple of good ones in the twos. They can't get a game at the moment. Buchanan. Oh, Spud's got his little stat. <laughs> Kirk, he chips it. 62-point victory to the Sydney Swans. Ted Richards tries to lead to it with a long shot after the siren. But they are back, the Sydney Swans. The pointy end of the season, not far away. Some of their big guns hitting form. Barry Hall back in town this afternoon. Nick Davis playing well. Grand final. Replay against the West Coast Eagles next week. And that might be a true indicator as to exactly how well the Sydney Swans are playing. But an emphatic victory this afternoon. And their list of goal kickers smart, has been impressive this afternoon. Well, 11 goal kickers, Dwayne. Not only that, multiple goal kickers with Schneider, Kirk, Malcheski, O'Loughlin, Davis, Hall, Everett with four, and McVeigh. So you've got seven players. Big afternoon at the office for the Swans. They win by 62. Where the 